Hello traders and welcome to this Blueberry Markets video update with me John Kibler, Head Currency Analyst. In this video we're going to go over the week ahead analysis, going to go through some of the news this week as well as some charts to watch. So real heavy news week coming up, it's probably going to be one of the biggest uh, news events of this year so far and that's because investors are looking to see if the FOMC or the Federal Reserve are going to pause interest rates at 5.25% now, 70% of the market is pricing in this rate pause here at 5.25%. So we'll see if the Federal Reserve follow through with that hold. It'll be quite interesting considering we've recently had the RBA and the Bank of Canada hike interest rates unexpectedly. However, I must just say that the data is a little bit different. Obviously, we've seen in the US, for instance, inflation is coming down. And uh, to kind of add to that, before we actually get to this FOMC uh, federal funds rate decision, we do have some CPI data out of the US and core CPI is meant to fall from 4.9% to 4.1% and uh, CPI month on month is expected to fall from 0.4% to 0.2%. So be interesting to see here how this dynamic sets up for the week. If we start seeing positive data from the CPI and also PPI, which is also expected to come in lower, then that could put a little bit of pressure on the Fed to actually hike interest rates again. So we'll see what happens there. But market at the moment, 70% pricing in that pause going into this week. In other central bank news data, then we've got the ECB looking to hike interest rates from 3.75% to 4%. And we also, at the end of the week, have a monetary policy statement from the Bank of Japan. So again, going to be super interesting to see how the ECB and the Bank of Japan align going into this month. So going on to the strength meter then, so we've seen some changes. We've seen uh, the Canadian dollar become the strongest currency, looking for those reversal signals potentially on CAD now. We've also seen uh, the pound strengthen a little bit, starting to show that it's, it's coming down a little bit from these reversal areas. Um, and we're watching it against some stronger currencies. The uh, euro has started to bounce a little bit. However, I think that's a little bit false coming into this data release. Looking across the board, the euro is still looking a little bit vulnerable against most currencies. And you can see it's still weaker than the likes of the Australian dollar, the pound and the Canadian dollar. So need to be a little bit careful with that one. Uh, but the main focus would be on the Canadian dollar really, considering it's at plus seven in that reversal zone now. Going on to the US dollar index then. So this is going to be an interesting market to watch going into this week. Of course, we were expecting the price to be around about the 105 level, which still has a possibility to do. However, if we don't see any kind of shock decisions here and the market has can has been right to price this pause in, then we may see the dollar come a little bit lower this week with the 103 highs being the next level of support. 105 would be a good area to see price head towards because this is our spike high here previously, so it makes a good resistance level. But if we don't get there, then we'll have to see if price trades below the 103, which could lead to a move down to the 102 spot 30s. Going on to dollar yen weekly time frame, just looking at the bigger picture on most of these currency pairs now, because you can see that we've had this bearish inside candle here now inside candles can often lead to large breakout moves for example we had a bearish inside candle here and the week that followed was a very strong bearish week you can see here we had an inside bullish candlestick and then we followed on with some very strong uh, moves after that so we can often see an inside candle create a large move now if we were to see maybe a shock decision and the Fed did hike rates, then the market may head towards the 142, maybe even the 145.50. We have seen the yen been significantly weak so far. However, if we don't get that shock decision, maybe a break below 137 spot 50 could also be something to consider. Or the 137.50 could act as support. I think what we've got at the moment, though, is two currencies that are fairly weak at the moment and that's why we're getting this range bound 
movement. So definitely need some kind of catalyst to drive this market in either direction. And we've got two chances of that really with the Federal Reserve Funds Rate and the Bank of Japan Monetary Policy Statement at the end of the week. Going on to pound then, so cable still looking bullish here. We were talking about this weekly upward trend and talking about whether price would continue to press towards the one spot 26.50. Last week's bullish candle stick almost confirming there's a potential for price to continue to trade to the upside here. So I'll be looking to see if we get any kind of pullbacks on lower time frames uh, personally to see if there's any more upside to the pound with one spot 26.50 being targets for those buyers on this trend. Finally then, dollar CAD. I wanted to feature a CAD pair and just wanted to show you the dollar because we are technically in this sort of minor trading range between the one spot 36.50 and the one spot 33 handle. Looking left, the one spot 33 handle has been support and resistance uh, in the past. So if price trades through that and CAD continues to get stronger, we've got the one spot 29 75 to look at if cad starts to weaken then on the lower time frames we could look for some changes of trend in order to see it come back up to those range highs here so dollar cad at a really crucial point we'll see how this one plays out this week we'll see how the markets play out uh, in general this week as well so thanks for watching this video update if you liked it then please leave it a thumbs up subscribe to the youtube channel if you're not subscribed already and i will speak to you in the next video